Cary Grant was one of the most iconic leading men during the golden age of Hollywood. Remembered for his debonair demeanor, polished masculinity, and cleft chin, he was the epitome of tall, dark, and handsome. He starred opposite nearly all the leading ladies of the 30s and 40s and appeared in a total of 72 films. But there was much more to Grant than what appeared on the surface. He came from troubled beginnings, and though he was in several marriages with women, he also had clandestine relationships with men. In this video, we'll explore Cary Grant's origins and the details of his secret gay relationships. While his on-screen persona was often a man of aristocratic elegance, Cary Grant came from a poor background. His birth name was Archibald Leach, which is what he used throughout the early part of his life. Archie Leach was born in Bristol, England in 1904. His father was a tailor's presser and his mother was a seamstress. His childhood was tragic. His father was an alcoholic and his mother suffered from clinical depression. When his mother was eventually institutionalized, his father lied and told Archie she had died. It wasn't until later in his life that he discovered she was still alive. Archie dropped out of school at age 13 and joined a troupe of acrobats. During his time with this troupe, known as Pender's Comedians, he learned the art of pantomime and how to perform on stilts. He traveled with this group of acrobats for years until it eventually led him to New York City. He stayed in New York where he became involved in vaudeville performances and worked as a stilt-walking carnival barker in Coney Island. During this period, he befriended an aspiring set designer named Ori Kelly, who would someday become an Oscar-winning costume designer for films including An American in Paris and Some Like It Hot. The older Ori Kelly took in the young, struggling performer after he was evicted from the boarding house he'd been living in. Archie was barely scraping by on his stilt performer and vaudeville income. He occasionally also worked as a male escort. He was a handsome young man, and even in a threadbare suit, wealthy women would pay for him to accompany them to dinner parties. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like, and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. During this time in New York, the young man who would someday become Cary Grant lived in Ori Kelly's Greenwich Village apartment. According to many sources, including Kelly's own memoir, they had an on-again, off-again relationship, from the time they were both struggling artists to well after they'd found their success in Hollywood. However, their relationship was often a turbulent one, and Grant seemingly broke Kelly's heart more than once. In his memoir, Kelly recalls being jealous of Grant's obsession with blonde women, but comforted himself by knowing Grant would always come back home to him. But Grant could have violent tendencies, a trait that later became a problem in his marriages. On at least one occasion, he knocked Kelly unconscious and on another pushed him out of a moving vehicle. By 1931, the two men were living in Hollywood together, each pursuing their destinies in the film industry. The former Archibald Leach landed a contract with Paramount Pictures and changed his name to Cary Grant after the studio advised him. Ori Kelly was beginning his career as the head costume designer at Warner Brothers Studios. But their relationship became strained within the confines of their new life in Tinseltown, and Grant increasingly distanced himself from the costume designer. Grant was soon living with a handsome new beau, a fellow Paramount contract actor named Randolph Scott. The two lived together on and off for 12 years and owned two houses together, a beach house in Malibu and a mansion in Los Feliz. Though at the time the arrangement was played off as two best friends sharing a bachelor pad, it's obvious from details that have leaked that they were more than just roommates. Randolph Scott was born in 1898 in Virginia. His childhood was a stark contrast to Grant's. His family was well off and he attended the best private schools and had a happy family life, unlike Grant's troubled past. After serving in World War I, attending college, and briefly working in the family business, Scott decided to go to Hollywood to pursue acting. Cary met Randolph on the set of the film Hot Saturday. They were immediately attracted to one another and soon spending all their free time together. Moving freely as a couple within the gay social circles of old Hollywood, they formed a domestic partnership and found happiness for a time. In 1933, a closeted gay journalist named Ben Maddox wrote a feature about the two men and their life together. He left out any direct insinuation of homosexuality, but used various common code words that would identify the two as a couple to other gay readers. The photos that accompanied the article display Grant and Scott in several domestic poses, including them lounging in the living room and wearing aprons while washing dishes together. 
The photographs were judged harshly by some homophobic critics, and rumors started to churn about the actor's sexuality. In 1934, Paramount encouraged, or possibly demanded, Grant marry in order to stifle gay rumors. He wed Virginia Sherrill that same year. Scott was distressed over the marriage, so much so that an unconfirmed rumor claims he attempted suicide. Grant was clearly just as depressed about his forced separation from Scott. Grant's new wife filed for divorce after only 13 months, claiming he was physically abusive. Clearly, some of his former bad qualities were resurfacing. She stated he was constantly drunk, sullen, and never showed any sexual interest. After his divorce was finalized, Grant immediately moved back in with Scott. The Paramount Publicity Department periodically planted stories about an endless stream of beautiful women coming in and out of their beach house, which the media now refer to as Bachelor Hall in order to keep gay rumors at bay. Scott married a year later to a DuPont heiress, but his marriage also ended in divorce, and Grant and Scott were reunited once again. Between the two of them, they had seven failed marriages. Richard Blackwell, the famous fashion critic, lived with them for a short period of time, and stated the pair were, quote, deeply and madly in love. By 1940, they were no longer living together due to pressures from studio to marry again and preserve their image. Ironically, they were both in the 1940 film My Favorite Wife, the script supervisor of the film recalled the couple arrived on set together, and to everyone's astonishment, instead of taking separate rooms at the hotel where they were staying, they moved into the same suite. Eventually, Grant and Scott went their separate ways, but they remained close for the rest of their lives. In the 70s, when both men would have been in their 70s, the maitre d' of the Beverly Hillcrest Hotel witnessed the two actors sitting together in the back of the restaurant, talking gently and holding hands. Cary Grant never publicly acknowledged any connection to his first possible partner, Ori Kelly, though when Kelly died in 1964, he was one of the pallbearers. Grant had a daughter with his fourth wife, Diane Cannon, and married again in 1981 for the fifth and final time to Barbara Harris, who was 47 years his junior. Grant died in 1986 after suffering a stroke. Despite many stories about his close relationship with other men, he denied the rumors until his death. In 1980, he even sued Chevy Chase for defamation, after the comedian referred to him as a homo on television. Sadly, it seems Grant always struggled to make peace with his past and himself. In a statement about his use of LSD, he said he received the treatment because he was, quote, hiding all kinds of layers and defenses, hypocrisy, and vanity, and he was trying to get rid of them to wipe his slate clean. Perhaps we'll never know the true nature of the Hollywood icon known as Cary Grant. In many ways, it seems he never quite knew himself. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you surprised to hear about the secret side of Cary Grant? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.